speakers. But I have a story to tell you too. Chelsea Clinton was talking to uh, one of the veterans that had come back from Iraq. And she was talking to him and she said, what things were you the most frightened of? Now that you're back, tell me what the three things that scared you the most. And he said, Osama, Obama, and your mama. <laughs> Thanks and good luck to everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. People who have, I pray your best friends have died, so be careful. And I'm really thankful to be here too. His 47th wedding anniversary, and uh, he said he's taking his wife to Hawaii. And I said, Well, what are you going to do when you get to your 50th? And he says, I'm going to go back and get her. <laughs> <laughs> Church education, only adult life. Now. This hoarseness is part of that big problem. Lived in Tallahassee, Florida, got a PhD there, marriage family therapy. So if you need help, raise your hand. My email is allredg at yahoo.com. And uh, I'm glad to set you up. Especially because I know your value system. You know, Provo High School, I know about you guys. And then from there we went to St. George, Utah, <coughs> and from there to Hawaii. We were in Hawaii for 20 years, yeah. pretty much healthy a little bit, but um, um, we were there for 20 years. I taught a year at BYU at Jerusalem Center, and uh, rich experience. I had students from 40 different nations in my classes at BYU Hawaii. <coughs> great, great experience. Then I got sick with, sick with uh, cirrhosis. And you know me well enough to know I never drank, right? <laughs> you think you did? No, I never did. But um, came down with what they call biliary, uh, primary biliary cirrhosis. And you, they don't know what starts it, and they can't stop it except with the transplant. And so uh, <clears throat> about a year after diagnosis, I went into St. Francis Hospital and got somebody else delivered. Still working. That was in uh, 2003, so we're still kicking around. Pardon me? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> what what in what way? Six. Do you have a liver? Bless your heart. You go to LDS Hospital for. How about you? The hell with you. I went to University of Utah. <laughs> so, uh, I had a couple of years of uh, pre med. But I never become a gynecologist. <laughs> but I want all you young ladies to know that uh, there's a free physical exam at my place after 8 o'clock tonight. <laughs> anyway, uh, Stan and Uli were factory workers and they got laid off. Oh my gosh, not sure. So they went to the uh, employment office to uh, uh, apply for uh, unemployment. And this young lady uh, asked Uli, well, what is your job? He says, I'm a panty stitcher. So she looks it up and she says, well, that's unskilled labor. But you only get $300 a week. I said, okay. So Sven goes in and she says, what is your job? And he says, diesel fitter. And she looks it up and she says, oh yeah, she says, that's skilled labor. You get $600 a week. Well, they get outside and he only finds out that his friend gets twice as much money as he does. And he walks in, boy, he's mad at hell. How come this is? And this lady says, well, diesel fitter is a skilled job. And he says, what skill? I sold the elastic into the panties. And I hand it to him and he stretches it over his head. He says, yeah, diesel fitter. <laughs> <laughs> See you tomorrow night. And we have been the best of friends forever. And he was going to be here. But he's working in Massachusetts, and he was in Rhode Island trying to make connections, and they couldn't get the flight from there into Baltimore. He spent uh, eight or nine hours yesterday in the airport waiting and could never get out, and he is so devastated. So I just wanted you to know that my best friend could make it. <laughs> it's not a joke that I'm up here. <laughs> but um, I'm Margaret Svedlov Pratt, and one of the motivations to get me up here is my cell phone's not working, and my husband keeps trying to call me.
He wants to know when he can come and pick me up. So when I sit down, if anybody wants to loan me their cell phones, I'll call him. It doesn't <laughs> work. But, um, in the meantime, short history. Uh, we lived in California for 35 years. Actually, he came from California, and that's where I met him. And uh, we just moved to St. George, and actually we're living in Washington, not St. George. Uh, we also uh, found someone to build a house for us and finished it after a year and a half. It took a long time. <coughs> Who is it that's building a house? Don Liston. Don Liston. You will get finished sometime. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, we have... We had six children, one passed away, and uh, we did, one of the reasons we decided to move to California, from California, is a neighbor of ours uh, sold their house, and we said, you sold your house for what? Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and so we left. <laughs> but, I think we can't remember anything, you know, we keep saying that. Do any of you remember a tell that went, um, ladies and gentlemen, horses and mules, I stand before, I come before you to stand behind you to tell you something I know nothing about. That's how I come today. <laughs> I live in Baltimore, Maryland, so I uh, flew out to attend the reunion. Um, I was here five years ago the 45th, which was uh, good to make contacts again. Uh, one of the real pleasures of being here is to uh, get to see Benita Perry Roylance again. Uh, if you remember, we were co-editors of the yearbook in our senior year, and that was a, uh, that was a great experience that has uh, established a friendship that's endured all through these many years. Uh, life is good for me in Baltimore. Uh, I was married for over 30 years and went through a uh, painful divorce, as all divorces are, I think. My former wife and I are best of friends. Uh, I've been very fortunate to find a partner. Uh, we just finished renovating a 150-year-old row house in Baltimore. Uh, and and we, uh, we love the neighborhood we're in. It's really a great place to live. I'm very fortunate that uh, Bruce is a, also a runner, as I have become in my later years. And uh, a few years ago, we established a goal to run a marathon on every continent. And we completed that. It was a great experience to travel all over the world and to uh, meet people and to experience the various countries and continents that we did. We're still active marathon runners. Uh, in fact, I'll run the Grizzly Marathon up in Montana next Saturday, a week from tomorrow. And it's, uh, it's been a great thing to do. I have two children, three grandchildren, or two and a half grandchildren. Third one due soon. Uh, they live on the West Coast, but we get together often and have uh, wonderful times together as our family. So it's great to be here. It's great to see all the people that uh, meant so much in my life and uh, shared with it. Many people here I started in kindergarten with at uh, Franklin Elementary School. I'll just, uh, I want you to know about a couple of jobs I had when I got out of school. One of them was, uh, I worked at a girdle factory pulling out a thousand a month. Uh, I worked in Las Vegas for a while putting makeup on showgirls and Pay was only $50 a week, but that's all I could afford to pay. <laughs> Are you here now, Connie? <laughs> Thanks, we'll see you tomorrow night. <laughs> Connie Joe. You know what, do, do, do some of you feel like I do? Like, this is state conference, and the state president just got up and said, so I like to bear my test <laughs> Um... It's great to be here. I don't feel 68 years old. I don't know about you, but I have a crutch. And, and uh, I might look and act that way, but I don't feel that old. Um, what can we say about our class? It was the best class in the best generation, in the best place in the whole world. Yeah.